Welcome to World of Marketing Podcast, a Foster Web Marketing production. Here's your host, Tom Foster. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World of Marketing, where I talk with industry leaders about marketing mindset and business growth. This is the awesome people that work at FWM series of the podcast. This episode is brought to you by my own company, Foster Web Marketing. Foster Web Marketing is dedicated to providing cutting edge, highly customizable websites, marketing, video, and strategic solutions specifically designed for law firms, medical practices, and other professional service businesses. Our award-winning web technology and marketing systems set us apart from everyone else. Please go to our website at fosterwaymarketing.com if you want to know more about marketing that works for your business, medical practice, or law firm. But today, my guest is my good buddy, Scott Duvall. Scott is the head of video production at Foster Web Marketing. He works with an in-house team of editors and interfaces with contractors involved in all aspects of video production for our clients and internal marketing teams. Scott himself has worked in video just shy of a decade with experience in writing and producing commercials, acting and crewing web series and short films, and is currently working on a master's degree in television and media management at Drexel University, where he is right now. Scott, welcome and thank you so much for taking time to visit with me today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Scott, you and I, we you've been with the company for how how long now? I joined in February of 2021. So yeah. just a little over two years now. It seems like you've been here forever. And <laughs> you know, you and I were talking for about 15 minutes before I even press record. I was like, well, we better press record. Yeah. This is great stuff for the podcast. Everybody, Scott is, I mean. He's a good friend. Um, he is, uh, I, I've had him uh, over and he stayed at my home with me. Um, he is uh, very creative. Um, he is uh, just a wonderful human being. And uh, he started out as uh, an SEO. He was started out doing services and doing um uh, optimization and working with clients, but this kid has got a knack for video. And so uh, we, ha we had a, a hole. We needed somebody to run the video department and we've needed, always needed that. So I asked Scott, would you do it? And Scott, you did it. And um, that's an opportunity like that. And, and uh, so he's been running the video department also still managing some clients and getting his master's degree at the same time. I don't know how you juggle all these things, but you're an amazing individual and you're, you know, you're managing the team of editors and uh, you're, you're just, you're just doing a fantastic job. And I can't thank you enough for what you have done with the video department, because finally We've got some organization there where it's just been chaotic for, for a long time. And now it is just seamless. And videos are coming out. Everybody sees these, these videos that are popping out like we haven't done in years. I mean, we used to do them a lot. I mean, we're the ones that put video, legal videos out in the first place. Right. right. And then we went through a time where we were like, we didn't know what we were doing. And then... You came and now got our act together again. So I really appreciate you, Scott Duvall. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it, it's cool to be, I, I don't want to say on the ground floor, because like you said, Foster was one of like the, the pioneers of legal video marketing. But um, when I when I came in as just an SEO, you're absolutely right. The video, uh, quote unquote, department was very much just contracting out with other people, working with um, partner agencies and such to get these these videos out for any clients that wanted it and but we would handle like in-house things ourselves sure but i i really enjoy being in the position of 
what's effectively just the architect of this department. When when I came down and visited you back in uh, 2022, you um you're like I I really want to get this up and running. We we have a bunch of like loose ties that are just sort of creating projects as needed, but um the future is is video and we really want to have a focused structured approach to it and um it's it's been a delight to be a part of that from the very beginning yeah you know it really the pandemic you know messed us up with video and um you know because we had our great beautiful studio with jim foliard and gear shift uh, back in fairfax um for years and years and uh you know we're the ones that started it all putting uh lawyers on on video on websites and um we were cranking them out and then pandemic hit and shut us down we went virtual i had to you know get out of that building and lose that i lost my studio and you know now Jim has a great green screen studio out in Reston that we can still you know, still use, and I do. I've used it m- many times. And we've got a little little studio here in the in our little old town office. But it's really we still do a lot of video production. As a matter of fact, um, I, next week I'm going out to uh, do a on location video shoot with uh, our great client Matt White. Oh fantastic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is it. This is I don't know how many times I've done this. This is probably the third or fourth or fifth time that uh, Jim and I have gone up there to shoot these videos and uh, what they are are just so everybody knows, we prepare the uh, content and the scripts for Matt White in advance and prepare him for that and then we go up on location i'm there with jim and we shoot these videos and then we come back and uh then you guys edit them yep then it it gets handed over to us and we take it from there to delivery and then it gets optimized and put on the website and blast it out to the world yeah next thing you know matt white's got all these cases for all these videos that he that he put out yeah, you know, Matt White appears to be a very prolific. He's prolific the one. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And, and, and then uh, I've got another one with Christopher Russo. Right? Fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Up in Rhode Island. Right. He's, you know, we're doing that one, I think, first week in April. I think Go that's right. Yeah, I think it is. Do mm-hmm. that one, too. Um, I can't wait to see my friend, Christopher Russo, my good buddy, Chris. Um, that's the second time or third time, I think, second or third time gone up there to shoot videos. Um, and uh, our own John Spare is going to be working. Now, this is great, too, because John Spare, who is a screenwriter. Right, yeah. His movie just came out. He is going to prepare these scripts for Christopher Russo. Um, and I'm really excited about that because it's the 90th anniversary of Kirschenbaum, the law firm. 90th. Not that Chris is 90 years old, like William Shatner is 90 years old. But um, that's how old the law firm is. Chris has been running that firm for fantastically for a long time so we're going to go up there and shoot some great video and um you guys are going to edit those and so you know there's a difference between what we're doing and you know everybody talks about the crisp videos out there you know these fancy videos that cost an arm and leg to do those are ridiculous videos um i don't advise them um but those are ego videos uh, for your ego. You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, a lot of those videos, uh, these these competing video marketing video uh, agencies, you're you're paying quite a bit, and a lot of it is just for the name, right? Yep. They're they're very established. When it comes right down to it, marketing video isn't so much about the ego. It's not about the brand of whoever makes the video. It's about you. It's about the subject, right? It's about right 
the content that you're putting out into the world. It's one of the best ways that we have right now to interface with um, with your potential clients. And these are content videos. These yeah. are these are videos that people um, will search for. Uh, that's yeah. the point of them. They're not ego bait. That's not what it is. No, no. It's you're right. The content video. It's it's an engine for your uh, your firm's interest to build upon, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You have like a blog or an article, something on your website that might have great SEO, it might have great keywords, uh, but you're only getting interaction from Google, right? If you have a video that talks about it, one, you could put that on the webpage and it will help, you know, adding adding media to webpages has been shown to to help help with SEO. But then you also have conversion that's on YouTube. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. For SEO and CRO. Um, but then you also have a video that's sharing the same information or at least a summarized version of that information on, on YouTube, the largest video search engine in the world. Um, that video can then be shared on social media. It honestly, it's the, the possibilities are endless. Once you have video based around your content from a uh, discovery point of view, and from a conversion point of view, you reach out. The people aren't always going to have time to like stop what they're doing, read a 2000 word uh, blog post, but they can pop in earbuds. They can listen to the, the content of the video as they're cooking, as they're cleaning. They can watch it as they're laying in bed. They can watch it while they're commuting on the metro. There's so many advantages to having content videos that um, really make make firms more accessible than ever before. Yes. And people want to see you. They want to mm. see your eyes. Very they want to see you talk about what you do. Yeah. It humanizes That's what you, right? they want. And mm-hmm. so if you're not doing video for, for your practice areas, for your service areas, for what you do, you have to do this. We're not talking about, Ego videos, your brand videos. Okay, great. Yeah, sure, you can do those, right? right? But we're talking about videos that get you clients. Yeah, they're functional. Yeah, and that's what this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, what is the difference? Like, and how do you prepare for that? How do we prepare for that? Like. Uh, going into it yeah you know whenever uh, one of my clients reaches out and says that they want to do videos maybe they hadn't ever done videos before maybe they did them a year or two ago I always advise them to look at the content that's bringing the most traffic to their site or perhaps the most conversions in certain cases Um, if it's outdated one they should update that content make it a little more evergreen but um, take a look at what people seem to be resonating with on your site and build video content around that. If you already have content, look for how you can break it down to be a little more niche, right? It's good to have an umbrella video, but you can make subcategories of these videos. So a criminal defense attorney, right? They can discuss the court process of the, the criminal defense system. And then that's a good video, you know, very, very high level, criminal defense 101 type thing but then what if it's a DUI versus a drug charge versus theft it could be a different process right and people are going to want to know okay I don't I don't need the general overview I kind of understand how the the defense process works but what do I have to prep for to gear up for my specific situation and um, I have a client right now who does that who's working on breaking down more high level videos into to more niche subjects that is a a great way to go about doing it take time to look at not just the content that you're pushing out but like you said the the video is there to display you it's to put you prominently as like a thought leader in the space so think about how you want to portray yourself are you going to be sitting at a desk is it going to be more casual uh where you're maybe out in a park you know, we've found that uh, vertical video 
is great for certain types of um, certain types of engagements. Those usually work better in a more casual setting. Maybe you're by a pool, at a beach, at a park, near a lake, something with water, oddly enough. Um, or is it going to be more formal? Is it going to be more, this is what you have to do to prep for this really important court case coming up? That's probably best behind a desk. So really think about the environment that you want to put yourself into. And then once you have a good understanding of all that, talk to the people who are going to direct to produce the videos like you, whoever's going to fly out and talk to them. They will take everything, all the vision and help you formulate it into a conducive video into something that really pushes the content in the light that you want it and you know it's it's easy enough to put yourself in front of a camera but it really is important to have the people who know the nuances of the equipment they they understand the lighting they understand the sound right somebody once told me that the difference between professional video and amateur video is light and sound and it's 100 percent true if both of those are there you're good if one of them just one of them is lacking it throws you off, right? And that can really destroy the the credibility, the trustworthiness of the subject when they're on the camera. It if it comes off looking, you know, kind of shoddy, then it's not going to convert as many people as you would hope it would. But you get the professional team, even if it's just a bare bones crew of one or two people, some people who know what they're doing. That is that is how you make a good video, especially in this in this marketing space. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. So another kind of video that we are just just finished, which is our story brand video. So we are um, as if we are implementing story brand throughout the company. And uh, Matt Tate, who is my chief marketing officer, is busy implementing this throughout. Our new our website is being updated as we speak. And I hope, I believe, they've told me this will be done by the end of April, and uh, we should launch this website. Wonderful. Um, but the story brand video that I did many, many months ago that has been edited, but you guys have been working on it mm -hmm. um, for. And what if you got don't know what I'm talking about? I'm holding up this book, uh, story building a story brand by Donald Miller. I cannot recommend this enough for your business. Um, this is the, uh, uh, from one marketing person, and I've been doing this my entire career. I'm a, I'm a marketer. Um, but this, this man, Donald Miller, has um, clarified marketing like no one else. And we are implementing this as our marketing uh, uh, foundation. Um, this really is the, the foundation of how we're going to be from now on. And one of the things is building this story brand video. Um, and you must read the book and you must... Uh, fault, you will understand what I mean once you do that. Uh, but the story brand video is a long video, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like what it's only eight minutes long, around about I can't remember the exact minute count, but it's it's about eight minutes, something like that. So there's Tom rambling on for eight minutes, um, about uh, the story of the you know of FWM and how we help people and um, how we serve and, and uh, our clients. And anyway, you'll see it soon because uh, we're, we're almost done, right? It's almost done. It's cooking. The, the, the video is completed. We oh, the video is completed. We it's just waiting for the website to be done. Yes. Yeah. Right. So the video is completed, waiting for the website, for the landing page to be done. Uh, but this is something that I am recommending for other people too, is to build this story brand video as well. So let's talk a little bit about that because that is a completely different thing. So what is a story brand video, Scott? So the video is, it's a, a single narrative that really describes how Foster, how our agency can 
take a client from point A to point B. And really, when it comes down to it, that's all agency work is, is you find a client who's in one position, they need to be in a different position, ideally a better position. And um, the video tackles that, that purpose by really diving into the pain points that are ideal potential clients have, right? Where they're like, maybe the leads aren't coming in. They're spending a lot of money on superfluous things that aren't really helping their marketing or their their growth strategy. And we explain examples that we've seen from countless, countless clients and uh, people that we've personally worked with, giving uh, credibility to the work that we've done, explaining some success stories, right? And then uh, about halfway into it, we talk about, how that's our purpose is to be this transformative force, this transformative element in uh, law firms and, and podiatrists' lives um, where things, you know, they, they fully shift course. We, we try to uh, attack with emotional appeal. So we're, we're using slow music in the beginning as you yourself are discussing these pain points, these problems that everybody knows way, way, way too well. And then once we start explaining these testimonials, these uh, case results that we have, um, things ramp up, people get more hyped, and um, the video becomes more of a less of an explanatory video of like, this is why you're having problems to this is how you can solve them. It's, it's how we're going to take you up that mountain to be in the better position that you want to be in. Would you agree? That's a good explanation. Yeah, that was fantastic. And and by the way, that is exactly what everyone needs to have. Um, if you go down the story, and I've talked to several clients that are adopting this, and many clients have already adopted the story brand mm -hmm. um, for their own marketing and for their own yeah. um, uh, website. Um, Lens Beta, I believe, Lens Beta is doing this, right? Um, uh, Michael Monteforte is going to be doing this. So uh, these are, uh, and and so the video follows a certain the rules. And so you want to make sure that you follow these rules in the video. Anyway, you'll see it folks soon enough. Um, probably by the time, hopefully when this, when this podcast is published, um, That's right. hopefully it'll be right around the same time. Let's see. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, Scott, well, tell me a little bit about what what motivates you. What motivates you? You know, I I spent a lot of time uh, complimenting you before this because you're just a wonderful person. You've just done a great job here with me. But what inspires you and motivates you and keeps you going? I again, I I do have to thank you for everything that that we talked about before the um before the podcast started, but. Uh, you know, that's a great question. I'm inspired by so much. I'm one of those people who finds just motivation in everything, right? It's like, I'll just be walking down the street. I'll see something and be like, oh, you know what? This building could be better built if we did this, this, and that. I'm not an architect. I'm just being delusional. <laughs> but, you know, it builds the creativity. And I think that that spark of creativity is what really drives everything I do uh, at work, at school, uh, just in my personal life, et cetera. Um, we talked about uh, my team, uh, the in-house team of editors that I that I manage. And I try- Thomas and Liam. Thomas and Liam. Thomas and Liam. Um, I, I try every chance I get to allow them to express their own creativity, right? Because, you know, editing video is great. Uh, I feel as though after a while it can get a little mundane, you know? Sure. <laughs> so it's a lot of just cutting out like deep breaths, ums, ahs, et cetera. So you've really got to allow the editor to um, express themselves. Like, how do I want to tell the story best. I have the content here. Are we going to use graphics? Are we going to cut away? Are we going to use green screen? Um, where we take out the background and put like a video on and they just kind of like pop up as like a picture in picture thing. Really allowing the team to stretch their legs is what I, I love the most about video. And that's where I get a lot of my motivation, my inspiration. Um, just because I 
I run the team doesn't mean I always know what's best, right? There's times where I say, oh, I think this, this edit could work with A, B, and C. And then Thomas or Liam will be like, you know, I actually think X, Y, and Z would be better because of these reasons. And I sit back and like, you know, you're absolutely right. That's that's the better move. And um, they create. Well, that says a lot about you as a manager that you're able to have that back and forth, and that you're not so like, no, 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 do it my way. You know? Right. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, it's you want to be. A lot of people talk about the servant leader right? You really want to be the one who's not driving everything. You want to be the one that lets everything push itself, yeah. right? And to do Great. that, it, it means you have to sort of be the one sitting on the floor, looking up at the person that you're, that's your direct report, because they're going to have the ideas. They're the ones who have the hands-on activity with, with the work product. What you think from afar is going to be great, might, might in theory, but it doesn't always play out well. Like human history, we know the best idea is only the best idea when it's in your head. Once you put it out and execute it, mistakes happen, you know, things fall apart. And so you need the support of everyone around you to uh, to to make a, a viable product. And video is is a great example of that. You know, we are a team and that's exactly what we are. No one person is truly above anybody else. If somebody has a good idea, that idea will shine. Right. Yeah. And that's how I feel too. I mean, uh, same thing, you know, I pitch ideas all the time and people are like, yeah, that, 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 no, Tom. And I'm like, yeah, that's a, your ideas are much better than mine. Let's do that. And you and I have had a lot of conversations like that. Like, I'm yeah, like both I, ways. I like Scott's idea better than mine. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, your mentors. Yeah. Uh, so, just in Foster alone, I have gotten I've gotten so much uh, mentorship and inspiration from from people that we work with every day. Uh, Susie Baca, she was on a podcast a few weeks ago. Um, absolutely love her management style. She she just the the way she goes about her day just allows everybody who works under her to just feel the confidence she radiates and it's it's contagious in a way and i'm i'm always striving to be that same type of person um before uh earlier this morning you and i were talking about gary vaynerchuk huge, yeah. huge fan of his um i i watch his stuff on linkedin on instagram anywhere i can pretty much daily um i i absolutely love everything he does and he's not directly, but he has rather indirectly explained that leadership is more of an attribute than a characteristic. You know, I can say I I snowboard, right? I am a snowboarder, but I can't say that I'm a good snowboarder. Somebody else has to say that. Right. You know? And when you had said earlier, uh, before the podcast started, you had mentioned um, you've heard people say that, like, I inspire uh inspire teammates that was really that was that was so great to hear because that's what i would love to be i aspire to be an inspirational leader but i can't say oh i'm an inspirational leader somebody has to tell you that it has to be attributed to you and so to hear that this morning was honestly one of the best things you could have ever told me um i'm so glad yeah yeah and and so the the mentors that I choose to to follow, I think, are helping me down that path. And you know, um, you Buster, you both have um, very similar but also very different styles of leadership. And learning how you both kind of manage your, I, I guess I could call like a duopoly of how Foster runs, is has been really intriguing. I've really enjoyed seeing where the strengths are and where the gaps are and how you guys fill each other's um weak spots and your strengths and it's 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 honestly it's it's a phenomenal case study to watch but outside of like the professional setting this is going to get cheesy but i i really i'm motivated by my dad i come from a super I, I come from a super entrepreneurial family a lot of the a lot of the people in my family 
aunts, uncles, grandparents, et cetera, have started their own business. And my dad is the very same. I'm what is your dad? What does he do again? What is his business? Yeah, he's a CPA. He uh, he runs Duval Wheeler down in Manassas, Virginia. And um I it's astounding what that what that company has done. Um and you know, you just what is it? Duval what? Duval Wheeler. Yeah. Wheeler. And that's the accounting firm? Yep. Wow. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I knew that. I don't think I knew that. You didn't know that? Yeah, no, I did yeah. not know that. That's fantastic. So he start, he's runs his own. That's great. Yeah, he's a bit of a serial entrepreneur. He's he's started a few firms in the past, but the one he runs right now is Duval Wheeler. And um, just watching the growing up, watching him go through the different chapters of his life has been has been wonderful, right? Uh, he was. He was in his 30s when I was born, and I just turned 30 last year. So I'm now at a point where my experience with him is the experience that I get to have myself. So um, it's it's fun to is fun the right word I I suppose yeah it's it's fun to kind of benchmark myself against someone that I know so well so deeply, and I I do try to embody a lot of the the characteristics and what I have attributed to him. To it within myself, and so I find a huge amount of inspiration, motivation, and just how he he tackles tasks, right? Um, yeah. yeah, he's a master of tact, and um, that is a skill that I think everybody should really learn. And yeah, I love that you have your dad as one of your mentors. Mm -hmm. um, so. Scott, what are some of the, uh, do you have any daily rituals that keep you going? Daily rituals. Uh, I'm trying to get into yoga more and meditation. Ah, yoga. Yeah, yoga and meditation. I'm trying to do a lot more. Uh, I do SEO work here. I am running the video department. I'm working on two master's degrees. I've got a lot of things happening. So it's really beneficial to just take like yes. 30 minutes and just collapse into yourself just right be, just exist in the infinite and um ever since i've started doing that i i'll fully admit it's not a daily ritual i'm working on that but every time i do it immediately after things just seem lighter you know yeah. that that's it it's well, I, I i i don't currently do that I need to get back to it, but I did do that yoga and meditation as a daily ritual myself for years and years and years. Need to get back to it myself. I'm I'm with you on that. Um, that is a great great advice for everybody. Meditate, be present, be present. Yeah, be in the moment. Take the time to always be in the moment. Yeah, that's definitely something that I do not do well. I'm constantly thinking about the future. I live a week ahead, right? And um, part of why I started meditation is because a lot of people were telling me, Scott, you need to calm down. You need to like chill out. And so it's always been a journey for a huge portion of my life to just live in the moment. I've always felt like just like I'm a floating head trying to predict everything that will ca happen. And that's insane. You just can't do that, right? Right. You just have to take things as they come. One of my favorite sayings is it is what it is. And like I really need to get that tattooed because my I favorite say, thing too. I say it is, it is what, what it is. is at least five times a day, honestly. So if that's a ritual, <laughs> I guess that's it. Just giving that up is. control of very good. Head. It yeah. is what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's true. You used to meditate and do yoga. What are your daily rituals? Uh, I get up and I uh, walk the dogs a mile. Cool. In the morning every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Walk a mile. That's good. At least a mile. A mile and a half sometime. Wow. But uh, yep, that is a um, and that is really my kind of meditation exercise you know call it what you will uh but uh that is like something that it's good for me it's good for the dogs the dogs need it i need it um it's something that has to be done so yeah good morning 
I'm out there. Cardio is big. Um, and uh, okay, so here's my next question. Yeah. What is the craziest thing you've ever done? The craziest thing I ever did? Oh, gosh. Um, when I was 12 years old, I was at a police academy. And um, I volunteered to be attacked by a drug dog. Oh, so, you told me the story. Did I, I tell you this story? story? Yes. Yeah. Well, for the for the audience, it's it's one of my favorite stories. Yeah. Is um I was put up in the suit, like I couldn't move. They had a helmet on me. It was like a big red like hockey mask type thing and like a goalie helmet. And um everybody had the dog attack them from the front and pull them down. And you got to experience what that was like. And um when I came up, they decided to turn me around. So the so the dog attacked me from the back. Um Apparently, I, I don't know this, like how true this is because I didn't see anything, but apparently the cop who had the leash lost the leash and the dog dropped me. He like just tackled me from the back and then dragged me across the uh, across the the grassy area that we were. The helmet came off and I was like, after being dragged, what felt like a mile, I uh, I was just like laying there. And then I turn to my left and there's these jaws that just come at me. Luckily, I was okay, but just crazy incidents that have happened. Wow. Um, crazy. And that was that when I was 12 and I feel like I peaked there. You know, I'll bungee jump. I'll, I, I've skydived, uh, not skydived, I've um, hang glided off of planes before. But that, for some reason, that that story at 12 was... Um, wow, that's was, better than hang gliding? Well, hang gliding, it's, a, it's crazy in a different way sense right when i when i hang i was hang gliding off of a plane i think we we're like half a mile up something like that um i just you just you're you're tethered to it and there's like a it was like a bicycle brake that was jerry rigged to to a rope and so you hit the bicycle brake and then you just kind of drop a few feet and then you're just free the plane flies off and you're just gliding and i remember doing it over a um a um a abandoned airfield like a, a runway and I was I was up there for several minutes and then I turned to my left so like I'm hang gliding with my arms out in front of me and I turned to my left and I actually see a few birds like flying with me like wow. not not even 10 feet away they were right there and when I went up they went up when I went down they went down it was, oh, cool. it, was it was a surreal experience one of the greatest feelings I've ever had in my life and um I, when I when I got down I was like, you guys won't believe what happened. And they're like, the birds, we saw the birds. And I was like, yeah, like that was that was so cool. And Flying with the birds. That is very cool. My my parents were like, you know, they're just messing with you, right? They're like, you're you're in our domain now. And I was like, yeah, I guess, I guess I was just visiting them, you know. And it really was an amazing experience. Anybody who has uh never done that, it's one of my biggest recommendations to learn how to hang glide and then jump off a plane. I love that you do all of these. You're so diverse and you're so, you know, you're not, you just do all of this stuff. You're such a, such a unique person, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm always trying to get adventure wherever I can, you know. So what uh, do you like? Do you have podcasts you listen to? Do you have any podcasts that you? Yeah, you know, I'm. Not the biggest podcast listener. I, I listen to World of Marketing, right? But um, the podcast that I constantly go back to is How I Built This by NPR. Um, Guy Raz is a, a, a great, great interviewer. He interviews different entrepreneurs, different uh, creators who have built companies that have in turn designed revolutions they've become movements rather and oh, wow. he's worked with some of the the biggest brands the the leaders of some of the biggest brands um a great episode is the one um with uh i think tony shea the guy who created zappos it's phenomenal um you you learn about the the story of burton of radio one of just a number of, of huge companies that are just timeless. At this I'm point. very interested in that because I yeah. love those stories. I love hearing the 
the, definitely check it out. The dirt of how how the because because really like Zappa, like you only hear the the good stuff, like mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but you yeah. you never you never hear like how did this really happen? Yeah, and they will do the whole roller coaster of the journey. That's great. They will talk about what's what's really like hopping, what was great, what was fine for them, and then of course like every good story around act two there's a drop right and you right. gotta talk about like what what went wrong in this story and then it's really after that it's just a story of resilience and and being able to turn bad luck around and it's super inspirational so you asked earlier where i get a lot of inspiration from that podcast is a big one as well yeah very good mm-hmm. well scott i think we're about to run out of time here yep. and it has been fantastic having you um i appreciate you as you know uh very much uh what you do here but even more than that you're a good friend um you're a good human being um what you do uh i i know how you are um to others and uh keep keep it up and um i thank you for everything that you do well, thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure working here and still continues to be. I was happy to be happy to be on the show and I'm looking forward to the future. Very good. All right, everybody. It's been Tom and Scott on the world of marketing on my new series. What did I call it? Awesome people that work at FWM. That's what we're going to call it. All right. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful day and you take care.